All right, welcome back everyone. So it's time for me to start putting the coatings on the roof. Uh, like I said, I've gone through the entire process here. So I, these are all the coatings I have on here. I, I made a crude drawing of where I wanna put the coatings, how many rows and all that. So this is the front of my car. This is the rear, this, these are the sides. So roughly each square is 13 by six inches because this was like a rough uh, measurement of uh, the width of the car and the length of the, the overall car. And so I've, I kind of just popped the coatings in there. Uh, you know, the middle row here is going to be the stacked uh, coatings, for example, Kenzo, or I take that back, it's right here, it's, uh, which is basically CSL XO, uh, C Quartz UK, SIC, Legend. Uh, we will have uh, IGL Quartz Plus and Kenzo, which are also two part coatings on there, but they're also part of the graphing stuff. And so I've kind of uh, divided it uh, graphing in the front, ceramic in the back. And I'll show you the way I apply it. So these are all the coatings on here. Like I said, I have 22 different uh, uh, coatings on here. Uh, I'm not going to name them all, but I have, you know, all the, the Jax Wax, Graphene, Jade Graphene. I'll name them all for you in here. Extreme Solutions, Ethos Graphene, uh, Exoforma Graphene. Uh, this is this is the uh, new DP GR4 Graphene Coating. I have a brand new bottle of SPS. Uh, glass parency coating, then we have IGL Quartz Plus, which is a base and top, and then we have Kenzo, uh, again base and top, and we have the Atoms Graphene. So those are all the graphene coatings. As far as the ceramic side, we have the Ethos Ceramic, uh, Poor Boys, uh, IGL Eco Poly, McKees 37, PNS Legend, uh, 3D Ceramic, uh, PNS Inspiration, C Quartz SIC. The Blackfire Pro Ceramic Paint Coating, and then we're going to do Crystal Serum Light. But I also have EXO because I'm going to do the CSL EXO, and I have Soul when I do uh, Legend uh, Top with Soul. So we're going to just, uh, these are just going to be toppers we're going to put off side here because we're not going to have dedicated spots for those guys. So that's the coating lineup. Uh, but I want to show you the way I do it on the on the roof line here because it's, it's, it's not as easy as just putting tape and then putting it on there and then just wiping it off. Because if you, uh, and I'll, I'll speak to that. So the first one, now, before I get to that, let me just say uh, this durability test is not going to have toppers because toppers are going to interfere with the true durability of a ceramic coating. So this is just going to be me leaving this car outside 24-7 uh, exposed to the elements and just me washing on a weekly basis. So again, not too much different from the previous test. I learned a lot of different things from the first one uh, in terms of the amount of time uh, to top a coating that requires a topper or a second layer. So let's put it that way. Uh, so I'm going to be doing the number of layers recommended by the coating company. So if it only the coating company only says one layer with an optional second layer, I'm only going to do one layer. Uh, I think that's fair enough. Uh, some coatings are, are single layer coatings which are not layerable, like Crystal Serum Light is just a single layer coating. Uh, you, know, you can't really layer it. Uh, EcoCode Poly is another single layer coating. Uh, uh, 3D coating, you know, they recommend uh, two layers of their coating, so I have to put two layers. Again, PNS recommends two layers for their coatings, as does uh, C Quartz. Uh, this Blackfire one is a one layer coating with an optional uh, second layer. Uh, Ethos, again, on their website says you, you have the option to uh, layer it. Uh, same thing with Extreme Solutions and Jade. Uh, Jack Swax actually recommends two layers, uh, Glass Parency recommends two layers. Exoforma is uh, one layer coating. I actually uh, emailed them and talked to them. This uh, graphene coating from DP, one layer. SPS, one layer. Uh, Atoms, one layer. And of course you have the, the IGL stuff, which is a, a two layer coating system. So that's the, the path forward. Now the first coating I'm gonna do, just looking at, um, looking at the, my car like this. This is actually the passenger side. I actually should label it so I don't, uh, even though I already know what I'm looking at, but this is the passenger side. And this is the driver side and then of course we have the center there so uh, pretty straightforward uh, in terms of me putting it on there so the first one I'm gonna do just to give you an idea of how I do it I'm gonna give uh, extreme solutions a go and I haven't even opened this bottle feels good to crack open a brand new bottle of a of a coating okay so let me just seal that up I'm gonna grab a towel Actually, there's another. There's a couple other towels that I, I had put labels on the. Oh, there they are. I'm gonna have to do these as well. So I actually uh, took these towels and I put numbers on there, uh, so that I know 
which side I'm going to be using for a particular coating. So if I'm using uh, this towel just for extreme pollutions, I'll do one, flip it over two, and then I'll use that side. Then I'll go to the other coatings, I'll do three and four, uh, that sort of thing. So let's take extreme solutions up there. And uh, I will show you the way I apply it. I'm going to have to, I'll just use this size. So again, it's, a, it's, a big, it's going to be a big test. It's pretty tedious applying coatings. Uh, to these areas. So I'm just going to guess this one doesn't have the stopper that's has the big opening. So I'm just going to load up this applicator so I get enough product to this doesn't drag. Okay, so I'm just close this up. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the suede, no block or anything, and I'm just going to work it into the paint. And I'll do circles in here just to make sure that it gets in there. So I'll work the edges and then I'll show you the way I work the edges. Let me just work this in a little bit more because I want to make sure that we have an even amount of coverage. Okay, so now this is I'm done with this applicator. I will toss it aside and then I'll just watch this. It's starting to rainbow here. I'll wait till the bands open up a little bit. Uh, but like I said, I'll show you the way I wipe these off. It's, uh, I can probably get away with just doing this. So I don't know if you guys can actually see it rainbow. I don't think so. Let it sit just a little bit longer. But again, this is going to be the entire process. I just have to just apply each one. I'm going to do all the single layer ones first uh, so that I can just knock these out. That way I can just pull the tape lines off and then call it good. Okay, so I think this is probably pretty good. My neighbor's having a party over here. If you guys want to come over and have a, have a good time. We have a live band. Okay, so I think that's good enough. Uh, I can actually see the rainbow is kind of just di dissipating. So at this point, I will just take my towel. And, um, okay, and I'll flip it over to this side and we'll buff it. Okay, and then I'll show you the way I do this. It's, it's kind of... And this is why I'm saying it's tedious. Okay, so I think I can do this because I now use this side. So I have to lift up this edge here. And there's a reason to that. Is if I leave this tape line the way it is, the coating seeps under that tape line. And if so if I were to leave it, I would actually feel the the raised edge of the coating once it cures. And that's why I do this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just pop this up. And then I'll just wipe that off. And I don't lift it all the way up because I don't want to take the entire tape line off. Okay, and then it's pretty straightforward to get this thing straight again. So, again, that's the first coating. Uh, and I just repeat the entire process all the way around. Like I said, it's very tedious. So now I will X. Um, that off. Let me go to the second side here. So what I will do, I'm actually going to transfer this over to another one, is I will actually just put a X here, saying that that one's done. And again, I'll repeat that process all the way around. I'm going to put this back in my little box here um, and then call that good so I don't have to get any more coating. So that's the entire process. I just want to give you guys an idea of what it looks like uh, and then uh, we'll do a first wash video um, pretty straightforward stuff. So again, I learned a lot from the second one. So if you guys are just kind of interested in this one, we're going to let this go for a year. And all we're going to monitor is the way we determine whether their coatings have failed is when they lose their hydrophobic properties. Uh, really, they haven't failed at that point. They've just lost their hydrophobic layer uh, on the top. So they're still there. Uh, so once they start losing their hydrophobic layer, layer, we'll call it a failed coating at that point. So. Again, pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna go ahead and knock this out because I wanna—I don't want to spend too much time on this. Uh, 
because that take me a while to, you know, because I have to wait, you know, for crystal strand light, I have to wait at least an hour before I put EXO on top, and again with these coatings as, as well, um, you know, this Kenzo one, I have to wait two hours between layers, so uh, again, let me just go ahead and knock this out, because I don't want to keep this car in the garage any, more, any longer, because I have to get my buddy's cars coming in this week, alright, so stay tuned, and uh, thanks for watching.